You know, it's funny how few people can actually spot a grift in real time. It's funny how often, like for 20 years, I've been saying, you know, man-made climate change isn't real. And now finally you're getting activists saying, well, hit the snooze alarm on, on the climate, climate alarms. And you can see it over and over again in all of these, and they're astroturfed. When it comes from the top down rather than grassroots, it's fake. It's like Coca-Cola's brand, uh, corporate training now is try to be less white. All it takes is a few minutes of research on the internet to realize this isn't coming from the grassroots. This is top down driven and people just blindly march along with it. Well, why? Why is this top down driven? Well, to get rich, to make money. The BLM founder branded fraud after buying a million dollar home in mostly white LA enclave. The co-founder of Black Lives Matter is under fire for buying a $1.4 million home in a posh California neighborhood that's 88% white. At $1.4 million, that's about seven times what I paid for my house, which I have a decent working class income. I can't imagine how much money this woman has been raking in, and this is why people are just falling over each other to prove they're more woke than the next guy. They're, they're capitalists. It's, it's making money. It's a grift. She's a self-proclaimed Marxist. Interesting, you know, interesting that it's all about equality. We're all going to be the same until she makes a lot of money. And then it's like, well, see you guys. The grift worked for me. Bye. I'm going to go live like a millionaire among a bunch of rich white people. Like, this is what she has chosen. So she's a race-baiting activist who has paid lip service to promoting black pride. So now we see what it is. According to Dirt.com, the home is located in Topanga Cabin, Canyon, an idyllic, rustic neighborhood 48 minutes outside of L.A. And less than 30 minutes from Tony Malibu. So very desirable location, but quiet, peaceful. She's not in the community. She's not trying to build a YMCA or doing any sort of outreach education, work skills, rehabilitation, marriage counseling, anything like that, that would help. It's all self-indulgent hedonism. And all these idealists went right along with it. <laughs> Less than 2% of the population is black. And interestingly, sports journalist Jason Whitlock, who himself, who's himself black, called her out for her hypocrisy and his tweet was removed by Twitter and his account suspended. Why? Well, it, da it damages the narrative, right? Like this is the astroturfing in progress. You should be able to see an astroturfed movement and just walk away from it. Take no part in it. BLM, the whole narrative. And you could see it with the Chauvin trial. I'm not even paying attention to that. Don't watch it. It's designed to get you angry, no matter which side you are. The, this is one of those monsters. The way you beat it is just not to pay any attention to it. And, and the only point of this is to point out, look, it's fraudulent. It's all just these big idealistic movements are always made up by individuals who themselves are just trying to get ahead, to get somewhere. I think Greta Thunberg is realizing it when she complained recently all world leaders want to do is take a selfie with her, and then nobody wants to talk about reducing their carbon footprint. She's beginning, I think she's going to grow up very bitter and very angry. We'll see. Just a guess. Because she's being used. She's got the idealism because young people have the idealism because they don't know anything yet. And then you hit reality. They point out she had a lot of places, <laughs> she had a lot of options on where to live. She chose one of the whitest places in California. She'll have her pick of white cops and white people to complain about. Yeah. But first, revolution. Okay, so revolution just means padding my pocketbook. And you can see all the Twitter comments. And this, uh, it's reminiscent of when former President Barack Obama, who perfected the art of sowing racial division, purchased an $11.8 million mansion on a 29-acre property in Martha's Vineyard, which is only 3% black. 
Also, I would add what's interesting is if you look at Obama's house, it's right on the water. Like if the sea level rises three inches, his house is underwater. That this from a guy that says climate change is coming and the, the water level is rising. Again, it, unless you can start spotting these grifts and just walk away from them, don't take a part of it. So people realizing now, Ryan Lee, she, they've been scamming since day one. And it, a lot of people are in on it. And then you get this infighting. It's why you have left on left now is it's just trying to trying to get the top position on the totem pole. So this guy believes it's time to purge it. You know, you can't you're not going to have a movement. The movement won't achieve anything. Actually, make America great again is a great slogan because the best thing is, is to just build build and achieve and grow she could have built actually with this money and and that would have been something black lives matter said it raked in 90 million in donations 90 million dollars how much of that do you think went back into black neighborhoods what is black lives matter doing with all the money they're accumulating if not helping their local chapters and black owned businesses to advance they seem to be fundraising for the sake of fundraising you know and really the black owned businesses are the ones that are getting burned down so blm chapters have demanded more transparency from centralized umbrella organization for the group since the establishment of BLM, our chapters have consistently raised concerns about financial transparency, decision-making, and accountability. We believe public accountability has become necessary. Again, it's all going to come to naught. It's interesting, my old college roommate, he had a uh, girlfriend, white, white girl, out there in uh, Olympia, Washington, and she was a regular protester. She went out and protested with Black Lives Matter. And he took her aside and he said, look, let's go through your CD collection. And every, every time, you know, they flip a page, look at these CDs that you have. These are the popular, you know, Backstreet Boys, Taylor Swift, whatever. You could go almost year by year and see she bought nothing but the most popular music for that time. And he tried explaining to her, he goes, this isn't some organic, natural grassroots idealistic wonderful thing that's going on this is just you always following the trends and she she couldn't believe him she couldn't understand this and uh what's funny is then she told him she was talking about getting married and doing all that and he said look i don't know if you figured it out you know i hunt i fish and he goes and i voted for trump and she left and never talked to him again. Like that's that's the level of discernment you are seeing with a lot of these people that are just falling in with the next exciting trend. They're either trying to capitalize on it or they're uh, super, super oblivious. But I thought, you know, Dave Chappelle back in the day had some insights. And what can blacks really do to start helping each other? Because I, you know, I look at this and it's like, Boy, that's got to be disillusionment for a lot of people. Uh, you remember this? Is correct. Well, stop cutting each other's throat. That also is correct. How can black people rise up and overcome? Get out and vote. That is incorrect. 